This April in Hokkaido and in Kyoto will be two elections that are harbingers of what's going to possibly happen in the uh, summer election for the upper house and potentially a snap election called by the prime minister for the lower house as well. We've been following this one. We've been predicting since early, right around Christmas time, that there might be a double election. That, that heat has kind of dissipated with a lot of things that are going on. We'll talk about that later. But also these two elections in particular in April are going to tell us a lot, tell the LDP at least, a lot about how they might do in the elections in the early summer. Michael, you're following this as, uh, very closely as well. There's a lot going on and just these scandals just keep popping up and opening up new opportunities. This will probably not end, will it? This is, these, are, th these are two by-elections that are just soaked in scandal. And mm -hmm. that's what's making them extremely interesting as political test bits. Mm -hmm. Because it's not merely policies. In fact, policies hardly have anything to do with what's going on. Personalities. In the Hokkaido race, what has happened is the former head of the Machimura faction, Mr. Machimura, died, and his seat is open, and it has been open for quite some time. And what they're going to try to do is fill that. The LDP is going to try to bring back somebody. In this case, they've all lined up behind the son-in-law of Mr. Machimura uh, to retake the seat for the LDP to maintain its, its majority, etc. But in order to do that, Mr. Abe has asked for the political support and in fact yesterday entertained at the Kante, at the Prime Minister's residence, Suzuki Munio, Munio Suzuki, the king of corruption. Oh. The, the, the corruption ch poster child of Japan. <laughs> uh, no, there used to be a saying that there are, there, there are the two co most corrupt persons in the diet were Matsuoka and Suzuki. Matsuoka mm -hmm. was the, minis the minister who committed suicide oh. under Abe's first administration, the agricultural minister. Right. Suzuki was the other, and Suzuki went to prison. Uh -huh. for his actions, and he's, he's out of prison and his, tri his trials and tribulations are still ongoing. Mr. Abe brought him into the Kante, even though his, Mr. Suzuki's daughter is actually an LDP member of the right. diet. And everyone's saying, oh, they're, they're trying to bring the daughter over to the LDP as well, but why tie your hands to mm -hmm. this man? This man has a, a, a career history of fingers in the till and, and stabs in the back. You don't want to be touching them. And yet they did this in well, order to, because he's a power in right. Hokkaido. Which tells you that the importance of Hokkaido is so great that he might even, uh, you know, toss, toss the dice a little bit just so that he can get a better handle on what's going on in Hokkaido. You're really upsetting me about Hokkaido because I thought Hokkaido was rather pristine and they have the great butter from there. It's <laughs> the, true, they do. And the wonderful fatty tuna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I just pictured it as removed from all of this dirty politics. No. And uh, so we can't get away from okay. it. Hokkaido used to have its own division of the government, mm. the Hokkaido Development Agency. And when you have something, when you have a division of the government and government contracts and government subsidies. In this case, no the wheat farmers of, of Hokkaido and the dairy farmers mm. and the pork and beef producers are major stumbling blocks in the TPP negotiations. Mm -hmm. And they've been paid off and, and push and been fine recipients of money for generations. It's not, it's a, it looks nice as compared to the rest of Japan, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's a lot of dirt there. What, what, Suzuki was actually not involved in that so much. He actually was a, 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 an operator on, uh, which is very rare, on the foreign policy side. Oh. His corruption was Russo-Japanese relations. Yep. Oh, he would right. take, okay. when they would do joint projects, whether in the, the Northern Territories or anything having to do with Russo-Japanese relations, he'd get a slice mm -hmm. for him, his own pocket. Mm -hmm. And eventually they got caught and, all, and there were members of the uh, foreign of MOFA who went to jail. Uh, let, uh, Sato mm -hmm. Masaru went to jail. Uh, the uh, Togo, whom you know, Kazuhiro, mm. he went into exile mm. in the United States to avoid the prosecutors for a Good while because he didn't want to be around because he was a he was Russia guy too mm. and he, he had dealings with Suzuki. It was a big mess. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
So Hokkaido, yeah, it looks nice. <laughs> All right? I mean, but Hatoyama Yukio, who was prime minister mm. and was found to have received very large sums of his money from his mother, which was all covered up by being donations from dead people. All this stuff, it, 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 it's not, it, the politics of the place is not Part great. and parcel. But, but this is <laughs> nothing in scandal land as compared to the Kyoto race. Oh. Let's talk that, about Kyoto. That is fabulous stuff. Here is this LDP member. 34 he, years old? Okay. He gets into the diet by marrying Kato Koichi's daughter in 2009. And suddenly they divorce in 2012. And he's elected as a, a member from, maybe that's not the word I should be using, uh, from, <laughs> from considering what the, cost, the problem is. Uh, <laughs> he, gets, he gets elected by the LDP as an LDP member for the, the Kyoto constituency. And last year, he suddenly announces that he's going to marry another LDP member who is visibly, i.e., seven months pregnant. Right. Oh, boy. And they get married on the 23rd of December on, well, on the national holiday. Big, big festival. And, I mean, he's, and he gets all the LDP. And he gets there. all of, gets incredible international PR and a b beautiful image as being the first male in the diet to ask for paternity leave. Right? Oh no. Yes. This guy. This guy. <laughs> this guy. Yes, this guy. <laughs> this guy, right? And the international press fawns upon him and talks about, you know, how what a pioneer he it is. It was a beautiful the story. Alan Aldo oh, of oh, Japan. Oh, he's yes. just the male feminist. Oh yes, the male feminist, everything. And it caused a great deal of distress because a lot of people knew what kind of person he really was. Mm -hmm. Snake in the nose. And because they knew who he really was, he was obviously being tailed. Right. Mm. And here comes Bunshin again. And Bunshin again prints up a story of him six days before his wife gave birth in, in, in the hospital, having a night-long tryst with a bikini model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this qualifies uh, as a pick This has this, never this, happened. No. <laughs> You're, you're right. It, they now, they now, they're now printing lists you know, of very, very long lists of names of, of women with whom he has had relations. But oh he, in boy. fact, admitted it, too. I mean, when he was in his press conference, he said, you know, it's, this isn't the only one, and uh, I'm apologizing to my wife as we speak. And I will be apologizing to her for the rest of my life, was his line. <laughs> oh, well, however long that life is going to be. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Anyway, he resides for the diet, and that's the seat that's open. Imagine you're the LDP Kyoto Prefecture uh, Association trying to find a candidate and trying to live down this story. Right. Mm. They don't feel like they can do it, but they're going to try. And the fellow who is running uh, for that seat, who is non-LDP, ran for that seat and lost previously. So he has a good base. He's got... Um, Good skin. Yeah, the DBJ already. candidate is going to be going to be in like Flint. Right. Uh, there's really no mm. way that the LDP can pull this one out unless mm. they suppress in some way turnout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hokkaido is a different matter. Probably the son-in-law will win mm -hmm. okay, because and would have won without having uh, mm. the help, whatever help it is, from Suzuki Muneo. But Muneo, I mean, that's I mean, he is in so deep. He he was groomed as a a policy aide for a member of the Diet, a very famous and well-known member of the, the upper house. And so he's, he comes from a, a, a long history of helping Hokkaido and facilitating deals in Hokkaido. Yeah, so, it's great at election time, but in, for whoever it is in that particular district, but Hokkaido is only a small part of Japan, and, and Suzuki's reputation in the rest of Japan is the absolute bottom of the barrel. Right. Mm. Well, we started this conversation today by saying that this is, this is potentially a barometer of how things will go. And after this election, maybe the prime minister will think twice about holding a snap election or not. It's going to be hard. Yeah, it sort of seems like the wheels are coming off the train a little bit here. I mean, do you Tiny all bit. get that feeling? But it's not unexpected. I mean, right. we, we in fact predicted that this, this will be kind of a funny season until mm. the 1st of April, and there'll be a lot of things coming out. And who, who would have predicted this much fun? But 
You know, this is Japan. But in this case, the idea of having a an April election. Why April? Why is why, why do these two elections happen uh, on the same time? Is it convenience? The 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 Hokkaido uh, seat has remained open for uh, several months. Well, the, the 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 decision as to when to have the by election is based on 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 the law, and it was just delayed a long time. And now we have two elections that need to be run. The indication is if they're going to, since they really have chosen a date for an April by election, is that the general election is absolutely off the table. I've heard that too. And that, uh, that, oh. that, 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 that that's, you know, they're telegraphing that. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about the July planned general. So yeah. the, the planned general election, I mean, mm. it wasn't planned. It was something that was thought of. Um, a lot of people have made comments on that, mm-hmm. that it, there will be a, a snap election. But now that, that, uh, theme has kind of crawled back into the hole and people aren't talking about it. But too many members of Abe's inner circle were either blatantly saying this is going to happen. Itching for it. Or hinted and said, I mean, Shimomura uh, Hakobun said, I think there's a 90% chance of there being an election, a general election this year. Of course, Mm -hmm. there's going to be the House of Counselors election. That has to happen by by law, right. but the, uh, a House of Representatives dissolution. And this this became a snowball, and then suddenly mm. the revelations regarding Amari, the revelations regarding the Kyoto representative, mm-hmm. and suddenly we have a completely new ball game. Mm-hmm. And where that really hurts is if they had really gone through with a dissolution. I mean, they see, Mr. Abe still could do it, but if they go th- don't go through with an April dissolution, what will happen is later on in the month of April, the National Pension Fund will report on its financial status. Mm-hmm. And with Nagata Cho, there's absolute terror about this. Why? Because under the Abe administration, they changed from almost entirely bonds to a heavy equities mix. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, we'll, yeah. and they bought at the top of the mm-hmm. market. And we have and it's, going down. it's gone down yeah. like a stone since right. then. So they will be declaring immense, gigantic losses on their portfolio. Sure. And then the Abe administration has to go into the House of Counselors election. Right. At that point, they were thinking, you know, we've got to we've got to change the, the dynamic. Mm-hmm. Well, the dynamic has changed again. Yes. And now that, you know, let's preempt whatever it is that's going to happen because. It, Okay, that declaration of, of the pension funds is going to happen. And that's going to definitely be a depressing effect on the House of Counselors election, mm-hmm. which cannot be moved from, from the July time slots. I mean, they haven't decided when it's going to happen, but it's w- sometime in July. Mm-hmm. That's going to be affected by what happens in the pension system. And then if you're going to run a, a House of Representatives election after that, Whatever lousy result you had in the House of Counselors is going to then depress the House of Reps. Right. That was the theory behind the whole April, mm-hmm. uh, let's push it to April. And the Komeito hated it, but we'll make the Komeito like it. It doesn't seem, it seems that that's out the window. And now the, the government is scrambling. You're right, mm-hmm. the wheels have come off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's these kinds of dynamics that dictate who's going to be the winner and who's going to be the loser in the upcoming upper house elections and whether the prime minister will call a snap election and dissolve the lower house at the same time. Please stay tuned. This is evolving and it's very, very interesting.